Hello, it's Thursday here at DX Engineering, and that means it's time for another Digital Dorsey. My name is Ken Dorsey, my call sign is KA8OAD, and uh, we're going to continue our series on the Raspberry Pi and some of the cool things you can do with a Raspberry Pi in the shack. Uh, last week, I demonstrated how to bring up a Raspberry Pi in headless mode, basically meaning there's no uh, display or keyboard on the Raspberry Pi, and we actually used a secure shell or an SSH connection to get into the Raspberry Pi at the command line mode, and we were able to send commands to the Raspberry Pi. Now, command line is great if you are running applications or you're, or you're installing things on the Pi that you don't need to have a GUI or a graphical user interface. It's fine for that. However, if you want to run applications like FL Digi or FT8, things like that, you're going to need to have that graphical user interface, that GUI interface. So this week I'm going to show you how to run a VNC server or a virtual network computer server that will allow you to get into your Raspberry Pi using either a laptop Laptop or a tablet and you can actually uh, load and run applications that do have a graphical user interface. So to start off we're back at the command line. This is where we were last week. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is actually sitting over here. We have a Raspberry Pi 4 connected to a portable battery pack just like a cell phone charging pack and I also have a signal link connected to the Raspberry Pi today because we're going to show uh, FL Digi and, uh, and uh, FT8. Now obviously I don't have the signal link connected to a transceiver so we're not going to do a full on uh, demo of FT8 or FL Digi but we'll give you an idea of how it works anyway. Uh, so that's the setup today. Uh, very convenient and very small uh, uh, footprint for if you wanted to use something like this in a go box or, or maybe a portable application this is the way to go. Um, you're very, uh, uh, very uh, small footprint on the, uh, the items that you need. So back to the computer here. So we, again, we're in the command line and we're going to set up VNC server. Now you'll have um, two apps. You'll have a VNC server app, which is going to be running on the Raspberry Pi. That's the server. And then you're going to have a VNC client. And the client apps you can run on your PC or your laptop. Uh, there's a VNC viewer client for all uh, OSs. There's an iOS version. There's an Android version. There's a Linux version. There's a Windows version. So VNC viewer is a very good uh, uh, app to use for this purpose. So when we're going to load the server onto the Raspberry Pi, the first thing we would want to do, we, we really need to, we really want to update the Pi software. So you want to do sudo app apt-get space update, and that will update the Pi. Now I'm not going to actually do this, but uh, that would be the first step would be to do the update. The next step would be to do the upgrade. So you'd do sudo space apt dash get space upgrade. And again, you're going to run that command and that's going to update your uh, Raspberry Pi. I've done all this already, so I'm not going to go through it. Once you have the Raspberry Pi updated and you're uh, certain that you're on the latest version of all of the Raspberry, of all of the Raspbian uh, 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 software, then we can go ahead and we're going to load the server. So what we're going to do to load the tight VNC server, we're going to use tight VNC as the VNC server. So we go to sudo space apt dash get space install space tight VNC server. Okay, and again, I'm not going to run this because I already have the server loaded, so I'm not going to, uh, to bother reloading it. Uh, but it is, that is the command you're going to use. Now, once you have type VNC server installed, then all you have to do to bring it up is at the command line, you're going to run VNC server space colon one. So VNC server space colon one, hit enter. And now it's going to tell me the server is already running because I do have the server already running. Now, if you need to shut down the server for some reason, uh, if you shut down the Raspberry Pi, that's going to shut down the server automatically. If you need to shut it down from the command line, you can do a, um, let's see, VNC server. Let me find it here. Uh, um, here we go. VNC server dash kill space 
colon one, and that will actually kill that BNC server process. Or you can shut the Raspberry Pi down to do that, and that'll work just as, as well. So uh, that's the way you can kill the server. Now, the only problem with BNC server is, if you do reboot the Pi or you shut the Pi down, then the next time you load the Pi up, you're gonna have to rerun BNC server. Now we can get around that by adding a line to the actual load uh, software on the Raspberry Pi. So you're going to go to sudo nano et, uh, forward slash etc forward slash rc dot local. When you bring that up, and nano is just a, a text editor, a standard text editor that's part of the Raspberry Pi uh, Raspbian system. So what you want to do, if you want to run the server whenever the Pi boots, you come down here just below where it says FI, I hope you can see that, right where the cursor is. Right below that line, there's going to be a space. So in that space, you're going to add SU space dash space PI space dash C space, then a single quote, forward slash USR, forward slash bin, forward slash BNC server, space, colon one, and then a single quote. Add that line, and then you're going to do a control X, and it will tell you, you know, you've made a change. Do you want to keep that change? You say yes, you hit yes, and then it's going to ask you if their file name, and just go ahead and hit enter, because you're going to use it, save it under the same file name. Once you've done that, now anytime you boot the Raspberry Pi, it's going to automatically load the BNC server. So we're set. Now, when you first run VNC server the first time, it's going to ask you to create a password for VNC server. So you will have to uh, create a password and you'll have to remember what that password is. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm just using my call sign as the password. So now that we have the VNC server running, we know it's, it's running and we can verify that it's running if we just go back and do a, a VNC server, VNC server space colon one, to restart it, it's gonna say the VNC server is already running. So that's just a, a, a good way to know that, okay, your VNC server is running and it's ready to go. So now we're gonna come over to the VNC client software. Now this is the client that's running on the laptop. And the client is VNC Viewer. And again, that, that's available in all flavors of OS. And in the VNC server, column here, we're going to put in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Now I hap happen to know this Raspberry Pi's IP address is 192.168.43.68. You also have to put in the colon one because that's what we added as the uh, VNC server. When we ran the, ran the VNC server, we put in colon one. So you want to put in colon one. We're going to go ahead and do a connect. Now it's going to warn us that the you know, the credentials are going to be securely uh, transmitted, but any data exchange can be, you know, susceptible to interception. So we're going to say, okay, we're going to continue that. Now it's going to ask for a password. I'm going to put my password in. I'm going to say, okay. And now we are connected to the Raspberry Pi with a GUI interface. And everything that you can do then on a GUI interface is, is available for you. For instance, we can go down here, there's a ham radio, and we're going to load FL Digi. And there's FL Digi on the Raspberry Pi running, and it's running on the Pi. So what I can do now is I'm going to bring up this little brag information here. And I'm going to start to transmit, and we're going to go over here to the signal link, and we're going to watch. When I hit the transmit, you'll see the push to talk light come on. So I'm going to hit transmit now. There's the push to talk light. So we're now transmitting through FL Digi on the Raspberry Pi. Now, eventually, uh, when that transmit gets finished, you'll see the transmit light will, will drop off. I'm transmitting right now in BSPK31, so it's a rather slow transmission scheme. But uh, shortly here, it should... Uh, stop transmitting. We'll give it just a second here. And now it should quit transmitting. And there you go. So we just transmitted all that information with FL Digi. So there's FL Digi running on a Raspberry Pi. Now how do we get FL Digi on there? Well, once you're in this GUI interface, it's pretty nice because there are a lot of applications that you can just download and install directly from the interface. So I'm going to click on this little Raspberry Pi thing. I'm going to come down to 
preferences and I'm going to say add remove software okay and you can use this this search bar up here so I can search for FL digi okay, in that it search it's bar gonna it's going to search it's going to find any packages that it find that it uh, that match that FL digi which may take a few seconds okay there we go so there's the FL digi package now you notice there's already a check mark box next to the uh, the package because I've already installed it on this computer but if it wasn't installed that check would not be there so you would just basically just check the box to accept that and then you come down here to OK and when you hit OK it will automatically download and install the FL Digi software. The same goes for the WSJTX which we use for FT8 if we search for WSJTX, again, it'll take a few seconds to, to search the database. And there is the WSJTX. And again, if you notice, there was a raw checkbox because I already have them installed on this Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to close this DNC viewer window. And now I'm going to come over to my tablet here. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. This is just an Android, Android tablet. And I already have a Raspberry Pi connection set up on this BNC viewer. So, yes, we're going to go ahead and continue. And it's asking me for the password again. And I'm going to say OK. Whoops. Yeah, let's see. Maybe I didn't get my password in there. Okay, it took my password that time, keyed it in properly. So there is the, again, VNC viewer showing the Raspberry Pi GUI on the, the, the tablet. Now I can go out, same thing with this. Now it's a little bit more difficult in a tablet. Whoops, I got to get the mouse up to where I need it. So I'm going to click on the applications. I'm going to bring the mouse down to ham radio. I'm going to bring it over to WSJTX. I'm going to click on WSJTX. It's going to launch the WSJTX software, which is the FL uh, FT8, excuse me, the FT8 software. Here it comes. There you go. So now there's the FT8 software. And it'll take a few seconds for this window to disappear. There we go. And that's fine. Okay, there we go. And there is FT8 running on the Raspberry Pi through the, through the tablet, through uh, the VNC connection. And I'm not going to go into configuring the Raspberry Pi other than um, if you are using a signal link and you want to use the signal link on the Raspberry Pi, you will need to install one um, driver to make the signal link work and it's called PAVU control. So on the Raspberry Pi, again, you're going to do a sudo space apt-get space install space PAVU control. Install that driver, plug the signal link in. Uh, the signal link will automatically be seen by the Raspberry Pi and set up, and it will generate um, a USB connection to USB audio ports that you can use then for FL Digi and for FT8. So I hope that uh, kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of uh, what you can do. And obviously now we could go one step further and we could actually put this on the network and actually be able to bring up our Raspberry Pi with the VNC viewer any place in the world that we had a, a network connection. So we could even, even remote into our Raspberry Pi and do FT8 or FL Digi if we wanted to that way. Until next week, uh, this is Ken Dorsey, KADOID. If you have any questions, please contact me at uh, DX Engineering at dxengineering.com or digital dorsey at dxengineering.com. We'd love to hear from you and uh, happy to answer your questions. Until next week, 73.